Today I'm going to be taking a look at Void Linux. Now this is a really interesting Linux distribution because Void doesn't use systemd, it uses its own runit in its system. It also has its own package manager, it's an independent distro, so its package manager is xbps. And you know, if you wanted to, you didn't have to use the uh, glibc, the GNU libc libraries, you could use musl as well. It's really quite interesting, if you go to voidlinux.org, their website you can see uh, some of their claim to fame here. You can see it's an independent distro, not a fork. You have some options as far as your C libraries are concerned. It is a rolling release distribution, but they claim it is a stable <laughs> rolling release distribution. And that may be the case. I've never actually used Void long term on any of my uh, personal machines. I've always, you know, just tested it out for a couple of weeks at a time on physical equipment. And of course, I've taken a look at it, quick looks at it in virtual machines before. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it for a quick spin. I'm going to spin up a VM. I'm going to take a quick first look at Void Linux 6.6.21. So I created a virtual machine here. I gave this virtual machine 6 gigs of my 64 gigs of RAM on the system, but 6 gigs of RAM is plenty for a distribution, kind of a minimal distribution that is void. I also gave this virtual machine two threads of my 24 thread CPU. So let me go ahead and boot into the live environment. And the live environment has loaded up. Now I am using the XFCE edition. Now Void Linux does put out a few different desktop ISOs. I, I know you can get it uh, with KDE and LXQ, and I think you can get GNOME as well. There's like four or five different desktop editions, but uh, I guess the main ISO, the one that seems to be their default desktop, has always been the XFCE edition, so that's the one I'm taking a look at. And you know, before I take a look at it, I'm not going to take a look at it on a live image. I'm actually going to run through an installation. Now, Void Linux is interesting because they don't have a uh, graphical installer. It's not the Calamari installer or the ubiquity installer or whatever it happens to be it's a command line installation so i'm going to open a terminal and let me zoom in now i know at some point during the installation i'm going to have to partition a, a drive manually i'm just going to go ahead and do it right now i could use a tool like fdisk or i could use a simpler tool like cfdisk i'm going to use cfdisk for purposes of this video i need to switch over to the root user here so su and the password i believe the root password on void linux is void linux yeah void linux no spaces all one word void linux and now i should be able to run the cf disk command now because i'm in a vm i'm going to do a dos partition type uh, if you were doing this on physical hardware you're probably going to do uefi and you would choose gpt but for me i'm going to do the dos table here and for me i'm not going to bother you know creating a whole bunch of partitions i'm you know what i, I will create a swap just for you know so you guys can see how to create the swap so typically you want to create your swap drive first so let's do a, a new partition i'm only going to give it one gig of space though which is plenty for this vm so we're going to create a one gig primary partition and the type needs to be Linux swap and right now it defaults to partition type is Linux so that's not right so let me go to type and go to type 82 Linux swap that's it and now what I need to do is I need to down arrow and go to free space and do a second new partition this partition is going to be the remaining space 19 gigs primary once again now this one can be the default uh, partition type is Linux that's fine but I also need to make sure that this my main partition is bootable so let's turn on the bootable flag so let me hit enter on that to turn the boot flag on and now let's write that and I have to type the full word Y-E-S, yes, to write that. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and quit out of CF disk. So now we've partitioned our drives. Now let's go ahead and launch the Void Linux installer. And it is called void installer you have to run it as root which we've already logged in as root here so this is going to be a incurses installer if you've ever used old incurses installers like on debian back in the day or if you ever installed freebsd has an incurses installer you know they're all very similar you just go step by step and do each step so first let's set the keyboard so my keyboard is going to be a us keyboard let's see if i hit u yeah i can go to the U's. and now let me just find us and network set up the network let's see network is working properly great it does it automatically don't have to do anything source let's set the source installation now because i uh, downloaded an iso 
we're getting everything from the ISO, right? I don't need to pull down anything over the internet. So we'll just do local, select a mirror. Let's see, does it select a default mirror for us? No, it tells us we need to select one. Select a mirror geographically close to you. Okay, so I am obviously in North America. And the best mirrors are the tier one mirrors, uh, but there are several tier two mirrors. The uh, closest one to me here in Louisiana would be the one in Kentucky. It's a tier two mirror, but I'm going to go with the tier one Chicago mirror for purposes of this video. I think it'll be fine. The following operations will be executed. Sure, it's updating the mirrors. The mirrors were updated successfully. Let me hit OK. Let's set the host name to the computer. So I'm going to call this computer void-vert. And then locale. So my locale obviously is going to be English US. If I hit E, we'll get to the E's, but uh, but they're not alphabetically sorted, at least not by the left column. It's actually sorted alphabetically by the right column. So I need to search for English United States of America. There it is. E N underscore US. That's it. And then time zone. So the time zone, I need America slash Chicago. So we hit C to go to the C's. And there is Chicago, even though I'm not in Chicago, guys, right? But it's Chicago's in the central time zone. Louisiana's in the central time zone. So it works out just fine. Root password. So I'm going to go ahead and create a super secure root password. And then type the root password again. Now let's create our user account. So let me hit enter. So primary login name, I'm going to call my user DT and his display name will be DT. And now let's create a strong and complicated password for our DT user and repeat the strong and complicated password. Now we need to add the DT user to some groups. The most important groups to be a part of are the wheel group. So you have pseudo privileges. Also, you typically want to make sure that you're in the audio group, the video group, the optical drive group. Uh, they look like they've already turned on the important ones. Audio, video, CD-ROM, optical, uh, KVM is another important one if you're going to use uh, VMs on your Void Linux installation. Yeah, all that's fine. So we'll just go with it. Now the bootloader. So I've, I've only got the one option here to choose slash dev slash VDA. So I'm going to choose that. Do we want to use a graphical terminal for the bootloader? Sure. Why not? And now partitions. So, okay. So if I partition, it's asking a drive to partition. I've already partitioned the drive uh, and it's asking me to do it again. I could choose CF disk or F disk. I'd already done this step. You know what? So I don't think I need to do that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to skip that step because I've already partitioned that drive. So file systems and you can see my two partitions slash dev slash VDA one was the swap slash dev slash VDA two is the, the main partition. So slash dev slash VDA two. Let's go ahead and change that. And we need to install a file system to it. I'm going to install the extend for file system. The mount point needs to be root. So just a single slash. Do you want to create a new file system on slash dev slash VDA2? Yes. And now let's go ahead and on VDA1, that's the swap. Let's go ahead and make sure that that is set to swap for the file system. Yeah, I think we're good on that. So let's go ahead and choose done. So we've done the partition, the file systems. Now the only thing left to do is run the installation. It says warning data on the partitions will be completely destroyed. Yada, yada, yada. I'm going to choose yes and assuming we ran through the installer correctly. It's going to install Void Linux for us. This should take just a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back once the installation has completed. And the installer completed. That took about two minutes or so for that last uh, install process where it just, you know, took all the packages on the ISO and installed them for us. So do we want to reboot the system right now? Sure. Why not? So let me go ahead. Well, I guess I didn't need to go back to the menu and choose yes. It's going to do everything for us. And we get a grub menu. So obviously the installation did work. And we come to our login manager. This looks like light DM, although it's not themed in any way. They didn't apply anything. It's just probably the vanilla light DM package, you know, nothing else to it. So very plain looking login manager. And when I log into XFCE, uh, it's going to take a minute, I guess, for the wallpaper to draw. It doesn't look like it's going to give us a 1920 by 1080 resolution, but I can take care of that myself. So let's go to settings. Let's go to display. Let's go ahead and choose 1920 by 1080. And now that you know we've actually got this properly installed, this virtual machine, 
forever. When I come back to this virtual machine, it should remember, XFCE will remember, I want 1920 by 1080 for the screen resolution. So let's take a quick look at what is pre-installed out of the box here on Void Linux, their XFCE edition. Uh, before we get to the categories, you have some quick launchers for terminal, file manager, email, and browser. You have those same quick launchers down here in the dock as well. You have terminal, file manager, browser, application finder, Let's go ahead and actually see what the browser is. I'm assuming it's probably Firefox, and it is. If I go to help about Firefox, you can see they're on Firefox 123.0. If I get into the menu system here and go into accessories, you can see we have Mousepad, which is the plain text editor for XFCE. Also under accessories, we have uh, the task manager. We have Thunar, which is the file manager, just a standard file manager for Linux, although Thunar is really nice. That's fully featured as far as a file manager. It's got everything you could possibly want for a file manager. We have a development category, not much here, the icon browser. We have a graphics category. Uh, we have the Ristretto image viewer, just a standard image viewer, part of the XFC suite of applications. Under internet, we got the browser, Firefox. Under multimedia, parole is the media player, and we have pulse audio volume control, and really not much else. You know, I'm not gonna go into like the system settings or, you know, the settings here, which is all the standard XFCE settings things like your accessibility appearance theming display mouse and keyboard things like that so really very very few applications installed out of the box that's probably why that install process was so quick it literally took about two minutes for it to actually install all the packages onto the system so let's talk about what's different with void linux compared to other Linux distributions you may be familiar with. Well, let me zoom in here. I'm in the XFCE terminal. Void Linux uses its own package manager, right? It's an independent distribution, so it has its own packaging system and its own package manager. The package manager is XBPS. And to install software or to update software, you use XBPS-install. This is the name of the binary here, XBPS-install. And if you want to update the system, dash capital S, lowercase u, kind of similar to you know, Pac-Man commands, right? So let's go ahead and it's permission denied because obviously you need to have sudo permission to install and remove software dummy, right? DT, what are you thinking, right? And there are a few updates, so I may go ahead and wait just a couple of minutes for this update. It shouldn't take too long. This uh, ISO, by the way, was just released less than a week ago, so there shouldn't be too many packages that needed an update. Although one of the packages that's updating, it looks like the Linux kernel is going to update to 6.6.22 because I think by default uh, uh, this was void Linux 6.6.21. I think they were using the versioning number for void Linux to match the kernel. So we're going to get a, a minor point release of the kernel here on this update. Remember, it's a rolling release distribution. So you're going to get you know, things like the kernel updating. We're on a, a static release, stable release distribution. You know, oftentimes you don't get kernel updates. Now let's talk about installing uh, programs that are not already on the system. I'm going to do a XBPS. I can spell it right. Uh, XBPS dash install name of package. I wonder if HTOP is installed. Let's check before I actually run anything. HTOP is not installed. So let's do a HBPS. I always want to mistype that for some reason. Space HTOP. Failed to lock. <laughs> I don't know why I keep forgetting the sudo password. What are you doing, DT? You need sudo privileges. And that installation of HTOP really took like a second. <laughs> that was a very fast install. And wow, uh, just checking system resource usage here, you can see we're not really using any CPU, which we're not doing anything. The CPU really shouldn't be taxed at all. But memory, how much RAM are we using? 358 megs of RAM of the 6 gigs of RAM I gave this VM. That is about as light as you're ever going to get for a full desktop environment like XFCE. That is extremely light. So there's really not much installed on this. There's not a whole lot of background processes running right now, right? That's about as slim as you're going to get for a GNU slash Linux distribution. One other XBPS command you need to know about is XBPS-query, which obviously is a search, searching for programs, searching for available programs in the repo. We could do a XBPS-query-capital R, lowercase s, and then, you know, name of program. Let's see if Qtile is in the void repos. And Qtile is there. Very nice. They actually have Qtile separated into two packages, Qtile and Qtile-Wayland. That's interesting because 
Usually on most distributions, it's just one package. Qtel, when you install Qtel, you get both the X11 Qtel and the Wayland version of Qtel. So let's talk a little bit about the init system. So they don't use systemd, they use run it on void. If I do a where is systemd, there's probably some systemd libraries, you know, things like elogmd, you know, there may be some minor components to systemd on the system, but you can see there is no user bin systemd, right? So there's no binary of systemd, so there's no program that is system D that is running on the system, right? But if I do a where is run it, you can see I do have a user bin run it. So run it is the init system. Typically with your init systems, the main thing you're doing is checking on the status of services, starting services, stopping services. And for run it, they have this command as SV for services, obviously. So I could do uh, probably need to be root. So let's go ahead. I'm not going to make this uh, sudo mistake again. So let's do a sudo sv and uh, let's check on the status of something uh, sshd for example the ssh daemon and it is running so it's already enabled and running that particular service a few other important sv commands would be sv and then up name of service so that obviously starts the service sv down name of service that would stop the service and sd restart name of service would of course restart the service some other things i want to check while i'm in the terminal let's do a quick where is pipewire just to see if pipewire is around and it is you can see we've got user bin pipewire so pipewire is available for us i'm going to go ahead and close out the terminal since there really isn't much to look at as far as the desktop and suite of applications there's very little installed on the system last thing i want to check are wallpapers just in case we have any cool wallpapers that i want to take a look at and it just looks like standard xfce wallpapers nothing else to look at default you know mouse wallpapers the mouse uh, mascot for xfce really nothing else to look at what is this one here. Uh, that's pretty cool. XFCE, the mouse, uh, the name of the desktop, XFCE. But I do like that, that bit of artwork there. Whoever created that did a really nice job. But for me, I'm not really crazy about any of these wallpapers. I think I would just go with the default. So uh, no wallpaper packs installed, but I bet Void Linux probably has some extra wallpaper packs in the repos. I wonder, since we did the xbps-query command earlier, let's go ahead, dash rs, and let's do a search for backgrounds. Any packages that have the word backgrounds in their name. And you can see Gnome-backgrounds and Mate-backgrounds. Those are the default wallpaper packs for the Gnome desktop environment and the Mate desktop environment. Still, you know, default wallpaper packs, but at least you'll have a little bit more variety. The Gnome wallpaper pack especially is actually quite nice. So that was a very quick and cursory look at the latest version of Void Linux. It was just released a few days ago. That's Void Linux 6.6.21. Although Void Linux is a rolling release and if you want fresher releases there's actually a, a void builds website that keeps unofficial images of void linux that way you know if it's been a few months since the official void release there is a community a site called voidbuilds.xyz i believe is the name of the url where they keep up-to-date builds of the various desktop editions of void linux that way you're never having to reinstall from an old iso because with Rolling release distros, you never want an ISO to be too old that you're installing from because chances are, you know, it's, it's not going to work if the ISO is more than, say, a month or two old. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Steve, Wes, Arcotic, Armor, Dragon, Commander, Angry, Darloff, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Nate, Erjan, Paul, Peace, Archon, Fedora, Reality, for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tenren, Tools, Devler, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Void Linux would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have have any corporate sponsors i'm sponsored by you guys the community if you like my work and want to see more videos about linux and free and open source software subscribe to distrotube over on patreon peace guys